Hello everyone and welcome to this week's quick tip extension tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to use your extension as a browser, meaning that you can basically plug into any web page that supports iframes and we're going to be going over all about iframes and uh, how you can change the properties and size and then of course access websites and use it just like a browser. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice a week in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out my GitHub to follow us for coding updates. And also in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. And this comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, live streams, and a lot more. And also check out the links down below for AE scripts, Gumroad, and uh, Adobe Exchange for other cool tools that I create. So we're just going to be using the iframe tag today, which is built into HTML. And it allows us to basically just give an iframe a link. And as long as that supports the iframe, some things actually aren't iframeable. I believe, believe YouTube is actually one of them. Uh, we just have to basically provide our iframe a link. And if it is supported, it will show up here once we run it. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's having a bit of an issue. So we're literally just going to use this in our basic extension testing code, which you can check out in my GitHub. And we basically are just going to use this iframe here. Uh, we can write it from scratch, we can just say iframe. And then any time we want to provide the website for the iframe, we just type it into the SRC, kind of like an image. You could say google.com. And just so we can set up the size and stuff, we can use a style or set an ID. So we could say the width is maybe 500 pixels and the height 400 pixels. Then of course, we need to close our iframe, save this. And now actually, let's go ahead and close this and reopen our extension testing extension. As you can see, it looks exactly the same. So let's go ahead and actually, let's change the size a bit, like 900 by 500. And now you can see it's a, a lot bigger. And there is actually a fair degree of customization you can do uh, with an iframe. Some websites actually allow you to access the HTML information inside of here. Uh, sometimes you can click on like view page source and it will load up, but other websites will prevent you from actually reading that information. But if you are able to read, say, you know, all these divs and different elements, you can actually take an iframe and do a bunch of math or processing based on what the web page is displaying. You can also, of course, check out all the attributes. Um, if we want to allow iframes, allow full screen, change the height and width, of course, and you can even use uh, source documents and source websites instead of just uh, doing links. Let's just see if we can uh, maybe copy a wiki page and uh, use that as our source as well. Save it, run it. And as you can see, we can also then access Wikipedia and then we can browse it just like it's a normal browser. We can even use, uh, if you have a, a back on your mouse, you can go back and forth. Um, and it works just like a normal web browser and allows us to go to links and all the basic HTML stuff. So this could be useful for just having a browsing feature in your extension or to actually read in data from websites. Like I believe to a, a degree, we could actually access the information within this iframe if it supports it. And you don't necessarily need an API and all that then to read the information inside this page. I could try maybe one experiment and say alert uh, document.get elements by tag name. And because I don't have an ID, I'm just going to use the tag name, grab the first iframe. And first, we'll see that that's a valid value. And yes, we get an iframe element. And then I think we just need to say dot inner HTML. And if it supports it, you can see it's blank in this case. So in this case, it's not actually allowing us to access that. But uh, if you wanted to in some websites that do allow you to access the inner HTML of your iframe element, you can as well. Actually, let's try this document dot body dot inner HTML. So we'll try our iframe dot document dot body. First, let's see if that's valid. Mm, I don't think so. Let's try dot document, or maybe we don't need that document. Undefined. 
Dot.body. In this case, I don't think it's supported, but if you had a supported website, you could use dot document and dot body and get the actual inner HTML and then do processing based on that. But the main thing is that you can access websites normally, uh, given that they're supported by iframes inside of your CEP extension. That's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out my GitHub to follow us there for coding updates and Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, which comes with cool perks like Discord status, live streams, and much more. And also check out the links down below for AE scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange for other cool stuff that I make. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.